talk more about this now um, with legal analyst Philip Holloway. All right, so we just heard Alina explaining because you've got these two lawyers, you know, they're very familiar and intimate with the law enforcement there. So now the state, FDLE, is involved in this investigation. So what are they looking for? How are they going to get to the bottom of accidental or something else? Well, it's absolutely appropriate for them to bring in the state, the uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, because of the at least maybe appearance of impropriety or conflict of interest. So, so that's the good news. Mm -hmm. uh, a good investigator is going to follow the evidence to the truth wherever that may lead, Fred. And if it turns out to be simply an accident, like the situation we just heard about where the father called 911, right. then there won't be any charges. But if the evidence suggests that mm -hmm. perhaps the father was criminally negligent mm -hmm. or, God forbid, did mm -hmm. it on purpose, then, of mm -hmm. course, we would probably see some charges. And I wonder what that evidence would be, because we all remember, you know, in, in the case of, of Harris here in Georgia, uh, what helped lead to charges in his case is that he was searching on the Internet and they were able to see that there was a... There was, there was some interest in how long before a child were to die if left in the car. Information like that. What would be the kind of information that might reveal something about intent when looking at these attorneys? They're going to interview everybody involved in this. They're going to interview the parents, the mother, and the father uh, if they're willing to speak to them. They don't have to, but they may. Mm -hmm. And they're also going to do a similar to what we saw here in Atlanta in the Ross Harris investigation, mm -hmm. they're going to look at computers. They're going mm -hmm. to do a forensic analysis mm -hmm. of uh, cell phones, uh, computers, mm -hmm. anything like that. They're going to find out what was in the mind, if they can, yeah. of this father at the time mm -hmm. he left the child in the car. It's not yet clear mm -hmm. uh, who put the child in the car in the first place in the morning. Right. There seems to be some discrepancy about that. So the sequence yeah. of events is going to be very key because we also saw how Georgia investigators were looking at, you know, Ross Harris went to a fast food restaurant at that time. The child was in the car, you know, and, and did the child fall asleep it was something that he alleged. So in the case of this, it would be the sequence of events, you know, who put the kid in the car like you, like you mentioned. How long was the distance of the driving? Were there any stops? Who saw what? All of that. Yes. Well, the initial reporting is that the father did not notice the child deceased in the back seat until he arrived home from work. So what's going to be important... So after getting in the car, did he come from the rear, the side, right. tinted windows, Florida... Right. And, 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 you know, it works around the courthouse, so there's mm -hmm. bound to be some security videos and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that investigators are going to pull. They're going to look at uh, any evidence like that, just like they did in the Ross Harris case, to try to piece together exactly what happened. And as I said, a good investigator is going to objectively follow the evidence to the truth, wherever that may lead, Fred. Mm, gosh, this is a disturbing case. No matter how many times you hear about this reportedly happening anywhere, you know, it's still so unsettling with a small child as a, as a father, myself, and a parent, I just really, just, these things really just eat at your heartstrings. Really they really does. do. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Philip Holloway, thank you so much. Good to see you. Appreciate that. We're going to have much more.